Hello, Rich. Hello, Mike. Welcome to our annual Halloween episode of Best of the Worst. It's our Halloween episode? Eh. What, aren't you scared? No, this is not very scary. Well, you're about to be scared. Hit it, Josh! Ah! Oh my god! What the fuck is that? And look out behind you. There is a styrofoam pumpkin. Oh my god! Don't touch it. Jesus, so creepy! Oh my god. Ah! Ah! We have three films selected for this Halloween spectacular. Okay. Our first film is called Scary or Die. Uh-huh. Not to be confused with the website Funny or Die, which is also scary because of how unfunny it is. Uh, it stars Bill Oberst Jr. and a cordon bleu chicken. Because I can't read what it says. <laughs> I hope their stage name is actually Cordon Blue. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. And he gets scared real easy because he's a chicken. After five strangers attempt to escape a horrifying fate, one is mauled by a flesh eating clown. So they're attempting uh, to escape. So is like, that like an upgrade? Yeah. To their previous situation? Yeah, they, they were attempting to escape a different horrifying fate. And then one of them just... <laughs> were, they, were they just fleeing like a garden variety serial killer at the start of the film? The way it's written, it, it seems to be the case. Um, uh, oh, one is mauled by a flesh-eating clown. Infected by the maiming, Emmett succumbs to a terrifying metamorphosis. As his body begins to change, so do his desires placing the lives of his friends and family in jeopardy. That's it. Okay. The, uh, his clown desires? Uh, is he gonna grow a clown nose while they're fucking? <laughs> <laughs> right during the climax? <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes down on her and all of a sudden you hear, <laughs> <laughs> and then, ba Baby, baby, what was that? <laughs> And then confetti. <laughs> Send in the clowns. That'll be in the next one. Are they all going to be clowns? This is like different short stories, isn't it? I, I don't know. Is that what's supposed to be happening? I'm gonna guess it's different stories they watch off of the Scary or Die website. Oh. oh. This one's The Crossing. So, so this will be an anthology? That's my guess. Well, okay. that wasn't clear that's at my all. Prediction. No, that was not clear at all, if that's the case. Oh, the person using the computer is a zombie. <laughs> Did you see yep. the hand? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, Rich is right. Rich is oh. always right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you be wrong? Well, what's next? Shopping Mall. Newly released on Blu-ray. All the high fidelity quality for Shopping Mall. <laughs> so many wasted pixels. Where shopping costs you an arm and a leg. That's a clever tagline. It's a great one. Shopping Mall, the future has arrived at the Park Plaza Mall, where state-of-the-art security robots are installed as the new automated night watchman. Scanning. It remind me of your mother. It's the laser eyes. <laughs> when an errant bolt of lightning short-circuits the main computer control, these protector robots turn into... killbots. Why did the robot kill him? Because lightning. Because it's evil. <laughs> Duh. Directed by Jim Wynorski, The Return of Swamp Thing, Chopping Mall. <laughs> He's directed like 200 movies, and that's the one they pick. Name a better movie than Return of Swamp Thing. Witches of Brestwick, The no. Bear Wench Project, 
You sound like you're not uh, properly informed on your Jim Wynorski filmography. I'm not as up to date as I used. Since I dropped out of the Jim Wynorski fan club, oh. I'm not as up to date. What was the movie that uh, that, that, that finally... really turned it around yeah. for me? It, it was uh, Holla Cream. His uh, his Halloween sex parody. <laughs> This is in the mall? Yeah. Yeah, the shower well, locker room. The, the mall. shower locker room in the mall? Yeah. That's for all the employees. <laughs> is that a thing that exists in malls? I'm assuming not. Shut up, Jay. <laughs> we gotta get boobs in here somehow. <laughs> it's a thing that exists in the chopping mall. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Jay! Hi. What's up? That was a very spooky film we just watched. Oh yeah, it totally was! Our final movie for the night is Exorcist 2. Oh my god, it's the scariest movie ever made. No, no, 2. Oh, oh my god, it's the worst movie ever made. This is not a cheap, terrible movie. This is an expensive, terrible movie. Mm -hmm. This is John Borman's film of Exorcist II, The Heretic, which implies that it's based on something, and it's not. Um, it's, it's based on a bad dream that John Borman had, and he, he brought his nightmare to life for all of us to be miserable with. Again, I already saw Zardoz. <laughs> <laughs> An ages old evil returns for another round. <sighs> that, I guess, is technically true. Yeah. Uh, bizarre nightmares plague Reagan McNeil, Linda Blair, Four years after her possession and exorcism. Has the demon returned? And if so, can the combined faith and knowledge of the Vatican investigator, Richard Burton, Bertrand. Richard Bertrand, and a hypnotic research specialist, Louise Fletcher, free her from its grasp? Mm -mm. Employing production design and special effects that are dizzily exhilarating? <laughs> dizzily exhilarating. That's, I guess that's how I would describe the whole movie, not necessarily the special effects. Yeah. But, and a supporting cast, Max von Sydow, mm. Paul Henreid, and James Earl Jones. And James Earl Jones! <laughs> Musical guest, Ned Beatty! <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh boy. Okay. Oh yeah, and we have an Inception machine. I don't oh god, that's true. Right. Too. So <laughs> we're gonna go experience John Borman's film of Exorcist Two, The Heretic. Okay, let's experience this and maybe some whiskey. Father Lamont, I have not asked you to perform another exorcism. I simply requested that you investigate the circumstances surrounding the death of Father Marin. You have performed exorcisms. You knew Father Marin. These people take it off by clothes. You see them too, right? <laughs> I don't know what's happening or where you're taking me. <laughs> that's exactly his look. Yeah. yeah, that's been his look throughout a lot of the movie. That's the theme of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> who you are, who are you taking? Richard Burton. <laughs> Exorcist 2. Richard Burton has no idea. <laughs> oh. What? So, yeah, we have Pazuzu, Pazuzu? We have Cthulhu, we and have Kokomo, Baba, Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. What was and the, the Baba, Baba Yaga? Just a witch. I don't know. The Baba movie. Yaga. What was the other? Is it a witch? Movie? What is Baba Yaga? It's a witch from the movie. Witch in, in like Russian movie. folklore. What movie? Oh. She lives in a hut that yeah, no, walks around on two giant chicken legs. Oh, okay. Baba That's Yaga. Not, wait, is that a real thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's a real part of the Baba Yaga myth. That's a real part of the Baba Yaga myth. So there's there's Bagugu. 
the Bagul. The Bagul. Bagul. The, oh, the Bagul. And the Babadook. That's what I was and the the Babadook. Babadook. Yeah. And then so, we have the Penangan, which is the uh, the Indonesian head with guts yes. coming out. I love that movie. Yeah, yeah I love that movie. So, I wish we so, watched that instead of all the movies we well, watched Well, the today. point is that all these demons have stupid names, and they make me laugh, yeah. and that takes away from their, their scariness. True. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, well, we watched some movies tonight, but the first movie we watched was Scary or Die. Um, Josh. Oh, God. Why don't you explain what happened in Scary or Die? Well. The film that uh, on the back of the box told us was about a clown. Eventually it was about a clown, but we had to sit through three other fucking stupid ass shorts first. Here's the question though. Yeah. Did they start making one feature length story? Yes. And then got like nearly done with it and realized, oh fuck, this is only 45 minutes. What do we do? I, yep. I am 90% convinced that that's what happened. We have this idea for a clown movie. Oh fuck, it's not long enough. Okay, let's start with number one, <laughs> The Crossing. You remember the title? I don't remember any of the other ones. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I knew before, but no, I don't know. David Spade. <laughs> yeah, this is Joe Dirt 3. Oh boy. So these guys are racist, so it's okay if they die. <laughs> yeah. Rednecks don't like immigrants. Uh, kill immigrants. <laughs> then some moonshine turns the immigrants into zombies. and they eat the rednecks. Yes. End of story. Basically, yeah, and it goes on for fucking ever. It stinks like shit. Okay, well maybe you should take a hit off it, Connie. Did it just like tickle like a marker on his teeth? That's what it looks like. Yeah, uh, you, uh, don't do that. Knock it off, Keith. Rednecks from Yuma, Arizona don't have a southern accent. <laughs> But Mike, they're rednecks. And was there anything funny in the first one? There wasn't really, was well, there? Well, he had Sharpie on his teeth. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. He's a, he's a redneck. They were all no. rednecks and there was lots of shaky cam. It was Rob Zombie's worst film. Zombies come up, and even though they just seem like mindless zombies that are kill, would kill anyone, I guess it's supposed to feel like they're getting revenge because they're they immigrant zombies. Also, I don't know if the message is quite on point because now the Mexicans are bad. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. If they were being like smart about it, they <laughs> they like like they wouldn't be mindless. They would they would be coming back to life for revenge. They would have a goal. Like you had mentioned the the sequence in Creep Show. Yeah. Right. Where uh, Ted Danson and the woman from Dawn of the Dead come back <laughs> to kill Leslie Nielsen yeah. because yes. he killed them. A, a lot of these shorts in the first one, past the main short, really did feel like the worst EC Comics adaptations possible. <laughs> they really were just, here's a message, but EC Comics was really good at making that, you know, a little more subtle, a little more just kind of like, huh, huh, irony. Or at least a twist where you go, yeah. oh. Not so much in this Here movie. you watch it and you go, oh. And the thing is, your description is accurate, but there was so much business before we actually got to that point. That's the thing, yeah, yeah it went on for None of it mattered, none of it mattered. God, you are starting to reek of that shit. Coming through your pores. Like, where are they going? <laughs> no, so so it's a short in which we feel no sympathy. We we feel more sympathy for the zombies than we do the living people. And then all the zombies get killed, so I guess they don't matter, by people who already know there are zombies in the world. Because right. the short really ends with the border patrol saying, is that another zombie? Yep, shooter. They know about zombies too. Yeah, I guess. Is that another zombie? <laughs> so why? So any, why? any twist that they tried to present in this movie as a twist, there are zombies, wait, wait, don't wait, matter. Wait, 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 wait. They, they know about zombies. Yeah. yeah. But the zombies we saw were an accident resulting from a moonshine spell. Pill. I think it was unrelated, the moonshine. Uh. <laughs> it had to have been unrelated. Unrelated to the other Those zombie Those immigrant outbreak. zombies were just waiting, they were all just laying under there, waiting for rednecks that hate immigrants to show up. And it just so happened, we don't it just so they could pop bubble. out and do an ironic thing. I think it that woke have. them up. They go, oh, moonshine, it's time to wake that up. Means, it, moonshine means rednecks are here, so we have a reason to get out of the ground again. 
<laughs> I guess. This is how we started the night, everybody. <laughs> That's only the first movie in the anthology of movies. See, we clean the human garbage up off the street. Veto vote one. And it was at that point, I would, wait, like to, wait. I would like to mention, it was at okay. that point, Mike made the wise, wise decision to stop watching it. To turn back now. Yeah. And, and pick another movie, and we decided to soldier forward because we are dumb. We yeah. did not listen. We did, we not, did not listen. listen. <laughs> and yet we so oh. oh my god! Oh. But yet we soldiered on to film number two, which was about a sad guy walking around Korea sad. or Koreatown. Was that the sad, second one? Sad that was the Asian, second one. Sad Asian man saves a girl. The twist is she's a vampire, but it's not a twist because we called it two minutes into the feature. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now, will that flower drop to the floor in slow motion? <laughs> <laughs> it's around the Thank table. you, Pets! Thank you, Pets! <laughs> we need a, uh, like a chalkboard behind us. Like, ah, it's written down. Two to one! <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's sad, and we find out that he's got a wife that had died. Um, which oh, we see a ghost. We see a, like like his vision of his wife, which around. has nothing to do with anything. Right. He saves a woman for, that has been abducted, and then she says, "Come back tomorrow." Just come, Tejong. You won't forget it. Promise. Wait, help, I don't know these ladies. <laughs> Getting abducted two nights and one or two two Fuck. times in one night. <laughs> so he goes back the next night and there's like like fifteen scantily clad women. Dude, um, hanging around. Yeah. Doing, doing what they do. And then it, we said, Oh, this guy coming up the hallway while this is happening is gonna be a vampire hunter. And we underestimated. Oh God, not just vampire. Oh, hunter. Jesus Christ. Oh, and it happened to oh, all the good stupid. stuff. Fuck you. Oh, fucking asshole. They couldn't be bothered to film the uh, actual <laughs> <laughs> pottery break sound. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe his bag just says Van Helsing because he's a huge fan. Okay. <laughs> he's a Van <laughs> Helsing with a band t shirt. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Sure, That's fine. sure. Okay, so we're done talking about that one. Uh, <laughs> well, wait, wait. <laughs> but it ends. <laughs> Why? We, we can't be done. <laughs> this, is, this is important. This is All the right. only important thing is this All is right. the, the, the horror movie equivalent of Gunshot Fade to Black. Yeah. We see that it's Van Helsing, and then we just hear him kill all the vampires, and we don't see it happen, and we don't know what happens Wouldn't to the man. Wouldn't that have been Off really screen. awesome? To it would have been great. Quite frankly, Van Helsing should have gotten overwhelmed. That's probably what happened in the fights. <laughs> Did Van Helsing die? We have no idea because we, we we'll never black. know. <laughs> great, great. What's the third? One? What's What's the third one? We gotta We gotta get through these. What's the third one? All right. Yeah, like so an the, assembly line mentality. Like when they made the movies. Like what do we do next? What's the next short? <laughs> Thank God we spent less time talking about that short than actually watching I, it. The third one. I don't one, even remember. Remembered. Okay. Oh, oh my God! Oh. <laughs> The third short is called Remember. It's called Re-Member. Oh, God. How ironic. I can understand why you would forget this one, though, because this has the least amount happening yeah. in it. Yeah. It's this really, it seems like it's going to be a really stupid Telltale Heart ripoff where this guy kills another guy. And man just, kills a guy, shoves him in the trunk, then the body disappears, <laughs> body kills the man. The yeah. end. Rich, what was the fourth short? <laughs> the fourth short was a long. That's true. It was the longest. This, the this was the uh, fistful of yen of yes. this anthology. Yes, it was. So yeah, in the in the main in the main uh, film, the uh, there's a fellow who's a drug dealer. A check. And he gets bitten by a clown at his little brother's birthday party. And then watch out! What? The? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Someone. Stop! Stop! And then he turns into a clown with hilarious results. <laughs> that made a louder noise than I thought. I'm sorry. That's all right. You start, <laughs> you start over. Do you need another beverage, Jack? Do you need wait. three more beverages? This isn't creepy. It's just kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> 
it could be a werewolf, and it wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't need to be a clown. clown. Gimmick, play up the clown gimmick. Right. Yeah. The rest of those shorts, we didn't have, they were just stupid and they sat there. This one, we could envision a good movie coming out of it. Clown well, there, there, there are little things that happen, like, yeah. He wakes up and he's got white makeup on his face, or what he thinks is makeup, and he's like, what the fuck is this? So his first instinct is to try and peel his skin off his face. That's not- He's gonna try and shave off the makeup? No, What? No, what are you doing? Why is this thing that's Uh, happening? I I don't like that. Yeah. He's he's trying to shave off his own skin. This would not be my first instinct. No. How about a doctor? <laughs> Go to a fucking doctor! He couldn't just wash his face and he'd wash off the makeup. He would have oh, actually... It's in, in reality, yeah. Here's the thing. What is happening? We're gonna, we're gonna cut cut all the fat out of this. Okay. That, oh. This could have been a werewolf story, right? Yeah. W- why was this a clown? Because they thought a clown would be creepy. But... but and, cur- and different. Here, here's the thing. If you're gonna do a clown, then why didn't they do anything clown related at all. They did a bit with his feet. What is going on? Look, look, his feet are too big for his shoes. Because it's better than a clown! (laughs) That's great! Clowns have big feet! That's the that only. That's the only. That was that was the only thing where it's like, oh, that's kind of clown related. Yeah. Let's let's say, oh, how about this? How about this? Uh, something falls off of a table, like maybe several things, like a fruit basket falls off, and he he catches them and starts uh, reflexively juggling, because clowns oh, juggle. There you go. And really all of a sudden fun. he juggles and he yeah. is like, ta-da! And people, where did you learn how to juggle? Oh, oh, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. He's he's in a store. Irresistible urge to buy balloons, oh. and you see him later that night just compulsively making balloon, making animals. balloon animals. There you go. Sure, sure. Well, in order for that to work, though, you need to have a, a, a strong contrast between him before the clown and him turning into a clown. Because before he's a clown, he's a drug dealer. Yeah. But they don't really establish him as being like terribly like like bad or, or like there hardcore. Are, yeah, there are a lot of weird conflicts in there. Like he's a drug dealer, but he's super devoted to his little brother and he's dating a nurse. Yeah, and he has a mom who's the same age as him. Yeah. Which is weird. One of the first things that happens is he tries to sell drugs to these people that pull up in a car and he vomits That's on the guy. The <laughs> Which totally should have been scarves. Yeah, he should have like, oh, scarves, and there's endless scarves coming out. Vomit scarves. Yeah. uh, It's like they had this idea to to say like, let's do a werewolf story with a clown, but they didn't do any of the work involved in building the clown werewolf, the were clown world. You have to establish the mythology. And there's another movie that did this that's called Clown. And this is a worse version of Clown, and Clown wasn't very good to begin with. <laughs> but, but I'm sure at least the director of Clown might be working other small indie films, right? I, I don't think he's doing anything you don't anymore. Think he's doing anything? No, I think they he did that know. one movie and then he just dropped so, off. See, that's why you don't do a Where Clown movie because you don't get anywhere. <laughs> Jack, Jack, would you are you are you trying to defend clowns? Are you what? Are you offended? Are, might, you, are you offended that this film's portrayal of clowns? <laughs> I'm. I, no, 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 because you know why? The, the spooky clown, the scary clown, the creepy clown is fine because clowns are fun. Everyone knows that clowns are fun and funny and are a joy to have around and I defend Jack, clowns. the only people who think that are clowns. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the world thinks they are creepy That's not true. Fuck. Everyone likes a clown. Everyone likes the kids love clowns. <laughs> Oh yeah, so what happens in the last one? Zombie. That's it. Yeah, five minute zombie story. Woman is killed by her lover, comes back as a zombie, kills her lover, then she stops at her house, watches a few YouTube videos <laughs> before going back to her grave. <laughs> oh yeah, it turns out that, that she's the, the, the shell story of the whole movie. Yeah. Because there's been you, somebody you see the hands. with a creepy zombie hand clicking a mouse and watching these dumbass fucking shorts, and it was her the whole time. 
okay. Well, what happens is she, yeah, she gets up from the computer and she looks right at the camera and that's when she realizes that people are actually watching this garbage and she gets mad and slams the door and says, you've wasted your time. <laughs> now I'm an undead. I have uh, supposedly uh, uh, an eternal life of roaming the earth and I've just wasted an hour watching these dumb ass scary Wait, or die bombs. videos. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. These are movies so dumb that only a brain dead zombie could enjoy them. Oh, wow. So but, she just, she knows she wasted But she time. is embarrassed that she watched them. That's true. <laughs> when she finds out we should watching be. her watch them, ooh, no good. Yeah. She deleted her browser history. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> zombie. She's a, all right. So that's all. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Mm -hmm. I forgot what movie we watched second. Well, the next film that we watched, um, which was a full story that had a beginning, a middle, and an end, uh, and it was called Chopping Mall. Right. And Jack, I would like you. You should have just handed it off to Jack without saying the title. Oh, fuck, that would have been good. No, yep. not when yep. stuff. That's too well, late. Jack, <laughs> explain. <laughs> I if, told you it was going to go like that. If you wouldn't have explained the title, I would have blanked out for a good ah, minute and a half. What a like, missed no. opportunity. Damn it. No. They didn't tell me I was going to be on the panel, so I got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, I wanted to be on the panel, so I got drunk. <laughs> well, sir, fine. sir, um, would you explain <laughs> Chopping, Chopping Mall? Mall? Go ahead. Chopping Mall was great. That was, um, it was, uh... A group of teenagers, or 20-somethings, or 30 It's unclear how old they're supposed to be. Right. Youngsters. In about an hour and a half, we bail this barbecue, and it's good times to the max. You've just <laughs> uh, The only Roger Corman movies exist in this universe, is specifically Jim Wynorski movies. Yeah. There's the restaurant that the two girls work at at the beginning that for some reason has movie posters all over the wall. Not even framed, they're just tacked up there. Yeah, it's so everywhere. pathetic. Come on, come on, take it while it's hot, while it's hot. Girls, come on. Yeah, all right, all right. Waitress, more butter. <laughs> oh. oh, the 80s. They, they, they cut out care. of that joke as quickly as possible. Yeah. It's like they were embarrassed of it. More butter. More butter, cut. <laughs> A, a group of youngsters decide to have a party in a futuristic mall. Does that fucking boombox have a keyboard built in on top? Well, uh, they kind of just want to have it in the furniture store. You have the run of the entire mall, but we all just want to fuck on these couches that we're trying to sell. They're, uh, yeah, they're apparently fucking right next to their other friends. Yep. Who are fucking? Smell like pepperoni. Well, that's the way you feel. Wait a minute. Smell. <laughs> I like pepperoni. I like pepperoni. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Picture as smooth as that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's clear early on that their intentions are solely just to fuck. Not in this just mall. to fuck, to have an orgy. Like we Basically, want to fuck in close no, proximity no, to each other. Well, no, if, if, they, no, if the intention no, no. is to have sex right next to each other, then I guess you gotta have to do it in one location. And why not the furniture store? But it's not clear that that's their intention. I think they all just want to fuck. And it's like, if you want to do that in the mall, go, you know, explore. Go somewhere weird and do it, man. Yeah. That would have given us some more locations, would have made it a little more fun. I'm going to say the guys probably had that in mind. Do it any weird place. The girls were like, I just want this nice comfy couch. I don't want to. <laughs> right. What, even the, the, what, the fountain? That sounds horrible. Gross, dude. That sounds fucking gross. <laughs> you Besides, what? Dick Miller's out there cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> don't bother Dick Miller. We don't want him watching us. I'm not going to tell you again, I'm not having I... sex in the candy store. <laughs> I am not fucking in KB Toys. <laughs> oh. Do you so, think anyone has ever fucked in a KB Toys? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. I'm sure. You guys didn't even People even work bat there, an dude. eye. So here's the important part. Yeah. All these kids having a party in the mall, but the mall has recently installed new security. Robots. And these robots are supposed to stop punks and bad guys from stealing stuff. Before I open the floor, I'd like you all to meet your brand new security team. I don't know, Mary. The one in the middle has an unpleasantly ethnic quality. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but lightning hits the robot box. 
and that <laughs> yeah. and that makes them evil. That makes them evil. Lightning yeah. equals evil. And like they're not evil. Like they don't smash everything around them. No. They don't cuss words. They just don't understand just, how to do their job the right way. Hey, I see your identification badge, please. Identification badge. Do not make any sudden moves. Sudden move? I'll give you a sudden move upside your head. I know you bastards were gonna be trouble when I first brought you in here. Ah! Ah! Nope. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Dick Miller. Aww. So Dick Miller shows up. Uh, they they refer to him as Walter. Yo, Walter, you having a good time? <laughs> Ty, you know Paisley. He loves the challenge. <laughs> which is a recurring gag if you're familiar with B movies. Walter Paisley, which was his character in Bucket of Blood. Yep. Um, so occasionally, whenever he shows up in these these one scene roles, he plays the character of Walter Paisley. He's not the first cameo as somebody else from another movie either. Oh, yeah, way. that's right. The opening scene is... Uh, yeah, it's uh, Paul Bartel and Mary Warrenov as the characters from Eating Raoul. The Protectors will make Park Plaza the safest mall in the state. Trust me. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so I want you guys to roll your eyes, but I want you to imagine that everyone is watching from very far away. <laughs> <laughs> Which is such a bizarre cameo because that's like it's a silly movie, but it's kind of a classy movie. It's released by the Criterion Collection, and here they are playing those same characters in Chopping Mall. Oh, eating Raul. <laughs> yeah, no, Chopping Mall is not Criterion. Is criterion? What? No, 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 no. <laughs> it should be. In a perfect world, Chopping Mall would be released through Criterion. But... That's true. I have to have a cigarette, and I have to have one now. Are you for real? So boobs. Boobs. We're in total boobage. Yeah. Uh, ladies, bodacious. Bodacious boobage. Thank you. Oh, Mike. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Hurry back. Count on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to come back until you showed your boobs. I forgot. I forgot you had those. <laughs> Count on them. I see your identification badge, please. Jeez, you little bastards are quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Drag that out anymore? No, oh, look at his face. I love it. It's comedy. He doesn't even look human. Right? No. He looks like one of those photoshops where you take the eyes, the nose, and the mouth and shrink it into the middle of the face. <laughs> 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 I will get you. <laughs> Kitty Twister. I'm trying to remember if there was anything special about that death. No. Uh, no. It's more notable that uh, you kind of wonder initially, because Dick Miller's given that robot a lot of sass back, mm. and uh, this tiny face doesn't give him any sass back. He's just like, whoa, you scared me. Here's my ID, and gets killed anyway. Right. Yeah. So, so that's when you know, know it's a serious, serious situation. They're just going to kill everybody. Yeah. And then his girlfriend's butt goes out to look for him. <laughs> I remember to be that. Fair, <laughs> I remember that. To be fair, her head is also attached yeah. for a short time. For a little while. Oh. Yeah. Oh my yeah! that's, that's the problem, is that's the only really great death in the movie. Yeah. Uh, the movie's a lot of fun, but that's the only really good death, is that head explosion. So nice, they showed it twice. That's true. Yeah. It, it blows into giant chunks everywhere, yeah. but when they cut to the reaction shot of their friends, it's just like somebody had like a ketchup bottle and just kind of went mm. across the window. Honestly, like I'm, I'm putting it third in place of all time head explosions. All, all wow. cinematic head explosions. Yeah. The number one is obviously scanners. Obviously. What's number two? Number two is Maniac. Why don't you see any more head explosions anymore? It's because these fucking pretentious filmmakers think they're too good for goddamn head explosions. <laughs> There's wrong. nothing better than a head explosion in a movie. Right. Nothing. It always gets you amped. Yeah. Every single fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! 
So, but then the robots break through the door. Barbara Crampton is way too good for this. I know. She's, she's trying to look convincingly scared. Yeah. The men and the lady folk get separated. Mm. Yes. And the men folk happen to find themselves a gun store in a mall. Peckinpah's uh, gun shop, which is a, a fun little reference. And apparently gun shops and malls are just a thing. There's a gun shop in Dawn of the Dead. I'm assuming it was a real thing at some point. This could just be a fictional, we need, we need guns, we need an excuse to have guns yeah. as a gun store. Where does this movie take place? Uh, it's, it's a mall in California. It's the same mall that's in Commando and I think Fast Times at Ridgemont High. They, so didn't, have, they didn't have guns and malls in California. <laughs> maybe, in, maybe in Alabama, <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> The scariest thing you'll find at a Californian mall is pizza with pineapple. <laughs> pizza with pineapple is the best pizza. <laughs> I don't know who you are That's anymore. my favorite pizza. Rich. Pineapple and Canadian bacon. <laughs> oh my God, the two worst things. What the fuck are you talking about? Let's go send those fuckers a Rambo Graham. Wait, they just give him propane? <laughs> <laughs> we might want to grill out later. <laughs> Someone walks out with a propane tank. It was the most useful thing they had. It was. These robots have horrible aim. Clever. All right. So they so they blow up a robot, kinda. And then he uses its tiny robot arms to push itself back up. It takes a little while, it's but he does it's it. It's tiny. It's tiny. Please don't touch me, robot arms. No. These are the kind of robots. Yeah, they're so awkward and clunky. Like I feel like you could just run in a circle and it wouldn't be able to keep up with you. And then you just push it over. Yeah. yeah. It's Absolutely. like like the kid in junior high and he steals glasses and you throw them over his head to your friend. Oh, you asshole! I'm not yeah. saying I do that. I'm saying that's a thing that bullies do. I think Jay was a bully. Greg needs me. I know he does. So while the boys were getting guns, the girls were crawling through vents to try to get to the parking garage, but the vents were really hot. Fucking robots. Apparently the robots turned up the heat in the vents and one of the girls freaked the fuck out and needed to leave the vents. Yeah. Take the cap off and stuff the cloth in. That's it? That's it. Light it and throw it. Ultimately it doesn't matter because they both die. That's oh, true. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah! It's not stuck! <laughs> Thank you and have a nice day. Oh. Susie's <laughs> exploded. Oh, no. oh, it's a guy in a wig. Yeah, it's all right. And this goes back into my, they're flat out evil. They're not just <laughs> defective programming because it doesn't just shoot her, like in the head. It, it figures out the most, no, the most sadistic painful way, way yeah. to kill her. To kill her. Now, the thing is, I can disagree with that because they are terrible shots. They're, they're a good shot when the movie needs them to be, and they're a bad shot when the movie needs them to be, because it's a movie that doesn't give a fuck. Hey, the movie's taking a little pause. Yeah. I'm shocked. Is she seriously calculate? What the fuck? According to my calculations, provided we survive the night, of course. We're going to be in hock to this place for the next 85 years. Um, I think that they Because it's have... allegedly their fault? <laughs> I was going to say, I think they're, they're okay here. They couldn't even come up with a good reason to have the movie slow down, so they're just coming up with nonsense. Yeah. 
Here's the question. They have a nice calm moment. Oh, why don't they just jump back into a vent? <laughs> because the robots still make it hot. It's hot in the vents. So? It's mildly uncomfortable in the vents, Ridge. <laughs> or more importantly, they have a nice calm moment. Why don't they just stay the fuck there? Because the movie has yeah, to happen. Right, movie, Any question you have in this is because the movie, the movie has movie to happen. To keep going forward. Because we only have 75 minutes and we've got to <laughs> fucking go. That's 75 minutes including credits. Yeah. <laughs> the including robots the might roll call. hunt them down. <laughs> hunt them down. You sound like you said they might hump them down. Shit, yeah, we saw the that butt shot. <laughs> the we robots saw that butt back shot on. too. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the robot's yeah, ultimate yeah. goal? They just want to get laid? Trump bots, grab them in the pussy. <laughs> 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 So, the last film that we watched, I would like to point out that uh, Chopping Mall is like 75 minutes long at that. Uh, and the last film that we watched was two hours long, and it was called Exorcist II The Heretic. And Rich, uh, what is Exorcist II The Heretic about? Go I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm going to disappoint you, Jay. I know you're waiting for, for Double Down Part 2. <laughs> but I, I think I more or less understand Richard Burton is a priest who is tasked by the Pope to investigate the deaths of the priest from the first Exorcist movie four years after the fact. Yes, they don't explain why it, yes. it takes so long. Satan has become an embarrassment to our progressive views. So, so Richard Burton tracks down Reagan, who was the girl from the first movie, who was seeing a psychologist. <laughs> Psychiatrist. Uh, so Richard Burton goes to track down Reagan, who was the girl from the first film, who is seeing a psychiatrist or is a psychologist, which is the right one. So Richard Burton tracks down Reagan, who was the girl from the first. This will be the last time. So Richard, that was almost the last time. This is the good one. That's fine. <laughs> so Richard Burton tracks down Reagan, who was the little girl who was possessed in the first Exorcist movie, who is seeing a psychiatrist who has a weird hypnosis machine that hypnotizes two people and links their brain, allowing you to share the hypnotically induced dream. So they, they, they do this. You're saying this just, all makes sense, This right? all makes perfect sense. We, just, okay. we fully accepted this idea. <laughs> Literally everything you just said doesn't make sense. You go to the hexagon hospital where people push around this giant hexagon <laughs> and the rooms all rotate. Yeah. And the science fiction doors open and close. Special special kids push around. And they the hook you up to the brain machine. This little machine lets us look into each into each into your dreams together. Well she explained. I thought it was just it a didn't machine that happen, was gonna hypnotize Reagan. Yeah. It, it hypnotizes both of them. Oh. And then they can go into <laughs> regular streams oh. somehow. So, so it's dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty dumb. So Reagan, the hypnotized Reagan is hypnotizing the doctor that hypnotized Reagan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, they're stuck. <laughs> we can't get him done do this! <laughs> and so then Reagan wakes up, and then the psychiatrist is all fucked up from Reagan's dream. And so for no reason, the priest gets hooked up to the machine, as opposed to the psychiatrist assistant, who presumably would be trained in these things. No, they just ask a random priest who happens to be there that day. Yeah, I was gonna say, he just met Reagan two seconds ago. Her heart, it's fibrillating. Put that back on, Reagan, you've gotta go back. You've got to go back and find her right now. I know where she is. Help me to find her. Well, the thing, the thing is, initially they say, Reagan, get back in there. You have to get her out. And then uh, the, the priest just steps in like, no, I got it. Get well, that was just dream. Richard Burton going off script at that point. He's like, I can handle this. <laughs> I'm the boss of this movie. I'm the hero Shut of this up. film. Yeah. yeah. And they're not going to show out. the dream? No, they're generally not. They're just going to show the people's faces? <laughs> And so then the, the, the priest, his brain gets hooked up to the psychiatrist who is having Reagan's dream. And, and then we, we see this in this very artistic- Wait, wait, Reagan is no longer hooked up to the machine. <laughs> They're stored in the machine. It's not just that Nurse Ratchet is seeing Reagan's dreams. 
her dreams are now in Nurse Ratchet's head. Yes. So when Reagan isn't in the machine when anymore, Reagan and Richard is Burton gets into the machine, Reagan, modern day Reagan, and Reagan from the first movie are both fingering Nurse Ratchet's heart. And then the scene ends. What? What happened? At that point, who, what's the priest's name? Uh, Richard Burton. Richard Burton. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know what happened that night because all he has to go off of is official police reports. Right. Which are ignoring the exorcism aspect. Which of. ignore all supernatural elements. So he sure. doesn't know what really happened that night because it's the only people alive are Linda Blair, her mom who's not in the movie. Yes. And that's it. But what he sees is that a real demonic exorcism. But all he's seen is a dream. That doesn't prove anything. You have to. He's this he's is, a man of faith. This is the logic. Of, Isn't this the whole is, point of the movie is that he loses his faith? But not yet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. After that. <laughs> after that. That's after the that. thing that causes him to lose his faith. Science fiction <laughs> exists in its own reality. If you wanted to keep this simple, you would just have the priest hooked up to Reagan's brain. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. And what makes it confusing is you have the psychiatrist middle woman. Yeah. And the reason they had the psychiatrist middle woman is so they could do that weird thing where Linda Blair was on the one shoulder and the dream vision of possessed Linda Blair was on the other shoulder. Okay. It's so they could do that artistic heart massaging thing. And that, that made fingering. everything more- She's fingering her heart. Yes. Yes. Let's, the heart not, let's not beat around the bush. They should have just used the crucifix. I, I'm gonna agree with Rich here. That made the entire movie made perfect sense. No, it didn't. And it, it's cryptic, and you're you have to figure oh, it out. You, but it makes sense. I right. think you're oversimplifying things. He's he's looking for information on what happened to a priest who did exorcisms, who went to her house to do an exorcism, because these things are very like official in the Catholic fucking church, where you gotta get permission from the cardinal while you're writing the book. <laughs> No, it makes I'm glad sense. The movie, I'm glad the movie really lays that out for us. <laughs> you just don't, I wouldn't, you just I didn't don't know, know that enough until... about actual exorcism. <laughs> I don't! I just watched The Exorcist too. It's horrible. Utterly horrible. It's a fucking science fiction movie about a demon. Who fucking cares? Me. I had to watch it. It made... <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it is about it that Rich and I totally understand this movie. It's very guys, bizarre because I usually like, uh, like we're the ones that like the yeah. weird abstract stuff and this movie is just like nonsense and you guys are defending it. it. Makes, and we're in like bizarro world. Does great goodness draw evil upon itself? So what he sees is that Pazuzu is the demon that possessed Linda Blair. So he wants to go research Pazuzu. I am Pazuzu. Doesn't he also see that in Linda Blair's dreams? Pazuzu never gave up complete control of Linda Blair. Okay, he's he's an influence on her. Pazuzu is she, she, she Linda Blair has that. memories of things about Linda Blair. He wasn't just so Linda, Linda Blair. Blair. That's how, well, that's how Richard Burton finds out. Yeah. has all of yeah. Pazuzu's memories. Right. Pazuzu is the person. <laughs> I just want you to say Pazuzu as many times as possible. The only thing that matters in a science fiction movie is the world that they establish. Uh. And this machine works in their world. That's all that matters. You know You know what I loved about the original Exorcist? All what? the science fiction. <laughs> That's a different conversation. <laughs> No, no one who went no one who went to see The Exorcist 2 wanted to see octagon-shaped science fiction psychotherapy rooms. That's the you know, can we just point out that too? The fact that that entire facility like makes you anxious it's and nervous. Yeah, it's, all, it's weird. like a big open windows and the whole room is or the whole facility is like in a big circle and you can see what everybody's doing in every little room and then there's just two people just pushing an octagon. <laughs> For days on end, yeah. just going around. They never get a break. <laughs> that entire facility is a, a side story cut from 2001, A Space Odyssey. It'll have to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> They're having real trouble with that octagon out there. <laughs> <laughs> How about adulation? Um, How about, what, what do we do with this hexagon? <laughs> We're waiting for the, the, the instructions. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> I've been pushing it around for weeks. What do I do? Listen, wouldn't a wheel work better? Is this supposed to cure me? 
So at, 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 through the sinking, uh, Richard Burton finds out that uh, Father Marin was working with this kid, uh, Kokomo, in, in, uh, in Africa. Who are you? My name is Kokomo. Uh, but he asks, he's, he's, he's in the sink with uh, Linda Blair, who still has Pazuzu inside her, and through that asks Pazuzu to show him where Kokomo is, and that's a bad move because that means instead of uh, asking Jesus, he asked a demon, and that makes him a heretic. <laughs> Thus the subtitle of the film. Hey, there we yes. go. Uh, so uh, Richard Burton wants to go to Africa to find uh, Kokomo. I've asked you to investigate the exorcisms of Father Marin, not to step into his shoes. You are in dire need of prayer. Uh, it, his boss treats him like he's a rogue cop. Even yeah. though like, you should I wanted you to investigate this exorcism, yeah. you've gone too far and you can't investigate the exorcism anymore. I want your gun and your badge. Oh, my you're priest. a loose cannon. <laughs> That was that scene, by yeah, the way. It which was. Made no sense. Because I'm actually in cover. Are you saying that the film had a scene that didn't make any sense? Here's the problem with the f with the film. <laughs> First of all, who dad? <laughs> who dad? Second of all, who dad? Look, you just build it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a little bit nutty. <laughs> What I want to know is who's putting up the money for him to to globetrot. He's I want to go to Africa. Who's paying for that shit? Clearly, the church is not paying for it because they said no. They said no before that. He's, the church he's, was paying he's, for he's it. Been, he's got tithes, man. Oh, you think he's just got he's got an account? He's been socking yeah. away some cash yeah. just just in case he needs to go to Africa to find a healer. Yeah, because you never fucking know. You never know when you have to track down James Earl Jones. Right? Look, he was he was saving up that money for a trip to Disney World so he could find. Never mind. <laughs> I think that was a child molestation joke. Uh, that, was a pretty good, that was a pretty good one. My faith is in Jesus Christ. Reborn. Prove it. Cross over. Step out of your despair. If Pozuzu comes for you, I will spit a leopard. He says he's gonna spit out a tiger. Yeah. I will spit out a leopard. A leopard, yeah. but then he doesn't. He spits out a tomato, which this is a is completely a different thing. That's not a leopard. A leopard will yeah, a leopard will fuck some locust up. <laughs> That's true. However, a locust will fuck up a tomato. <laughs> This is true. This is our internal logic. That's the logic. whole problem with locusts. I guess these are these are the logic <laughs> flaws the that, that that Jay and Josh find in the movie. Jesus Christ! Lo leopard versus <laughs> tomato. Locust versus tomato. Yeah. Aren't, and aren't these the 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 fights that infect us every day? No. Not really. No. Can I help you? And it turns out that uh, James Earl Jones, he's just a regular Kokomo with like a lab coat. Yeah. Who's I mean, really obsessed and then, with And then locusts. Richard Burton just opens up everything and he just asks all these questions where it's like, hey, you're a complete stranger. Let me ask all these personal things. Yeah. Who are you? Did you ever know a Father Lancaster Marin? Were you ever possessed by Pazuzu? Locusts. And James Earl Jones says, hey, you're a man who fell on my floor. Let me tell you about locusts. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, here's the biggest problem with the movie is that there is no immediate threat. That's true. There's just everyone yes. constantly talking about this idea that something is sort of evil and we got to do something, even yeah. though there's no, there's no like ticking clock. There's no, there's nothing. Right. Have, have there been, not that this is a good movie, but haven't there been good movies that didn't have an immediate threat? Sure, but this movie treats everything that's happening like there is an immediate threat, even though there isn't. Sp yeah. Specifically, like we get to like the final act of the movie. Reagan, where do you think you're going? It's okay. Boop. That's not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> so nurse, why did you let that mental patient just leave? Uh, she well, could. she said she was okay. Yeah. All of our main characters are racing yes. towards the original exorcist house. <laughs> and 
we don't really know why. Because Richard Burton's getting there? Right, because yeah, Richard the, uh, Burton is possessed and he's going there, and so yeah. then Linda Blair is following Richard Burton, and then the doctor is following Linda Blair, and then Linda Blair's handmaiden is following the doctor who's following Linda Blair. Get going. The girl has to get home. It's Cannonball Run. It's Cannonball Run. <laughs> <In> exorcist <laughs> form. Where's Adrian Barbeau? <laughs> Only he's legitimately dressed like a priest. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'll give you one for that. That's really good. That's really good. That's really good. No. He's mine. He's chosen me. Pazuzu's Reagan is the only Reagan. Okay, so how uh, they get to they get to the house from the original film. Yeah. They go inside. They walk up to the Reagan's bedroom. Yeah, and there's another Reagan there. Yeah. Uh, how does that make sense in any way whatsoever? Uh, in any logical way? Right. There's real Reagan. There's demon Reagan, and him fighting for sexy Reagan and real Reagan is the visual metaphor. When he starts punching sexy <laughs> Reagan. <laughs> The whole visual metaphor thing kind falls of apart. falls apart. And what is he just punching a bed? Yeah. Then yeah. why is the house splitting apart and why is it still split apart? Yeah, and the house splitting apart doesn't represent anything either. Right. And it's so just it's just like chaos. Yeah. It at least kind of makes sense. Metaphorically speaking, this movie ultimately, yeah, I, I can kind of see what they're trying to do. What <laughs> Metaphorically, they this movie kind of makes sense. Uh, That's the farthest you could go with it. As compared to The Jar. So you talk about well, the jar was an nonsense. abstract movie. The Jar, complete nonsense. You bring your own interpretation. I didn't defend The, the Jar, so. I know, no. I know. I'm no just, one did. I'm no one defended The Jar. What I am defending right now is how I can hate a movie like The Jar and yet defend The Exorcist 2. Okay. It's just it, very bizarre to, for me to be in a position where you're defending the weird I, abstract thing and I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? This movie makes sense. This movie has a logic of Linda Blair is a superhero. Bazuzu is a supervillain. Her arch nemesis. Her arch nemesis. Is trying to pre prevent her from coming to her full power so that she can oppose it. The priest is the sometimes swayed mentor. And James Earl Jones is the guy in the bug costume. Uh, but so Pazuzu knows that he or she or whatever, that, but Pazuzu knows that he can be driven out completely. Yeah. Yeah. Why does he go for it again? We have an in-movie example of the Spanish lady. Yeah. Who, who was a healer. Yeah. And Pazuzu got a hold of her and was eventually burned. Okay. So he got rid of that healer. Okay. So he was trying to get rid of Linda Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> end it! That is the end of it! <laughs> and we're done with Exorcist 2! <laughs> no, we're done! We're done! Nope, nope, we're done! We're done! We're done! We're done. <laughs> He's gone. Well, let's exercise these demons. Oh, God. Uh, and decide what film is the best of the worst. Jack. Chopping Mall! R uh, Josh. Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall. <laughs> Chopping Mall! <laughs> Yay! 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 <laughs> Suck on that, metaphors! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, do uh, what film do, do we want to destroy, if any? Scare or die. Skate or die? Scare the or video die. I remember Scare or die. <laughs> let's okay. let's we trash should, Scare or die. We should, we should destroy sc Scare or die with a sweet skateboard move, like grind on it on a rail with a. So, Josh, uh, is there any film that you want to destroy? Oh, I'd love to destroy Scare or die.com. Okay. <laughs> Why are we in a backyard? 
Oh, also, we're in what? a backyard. Why is that a thing? Whose backyard is this? Did we what set is, up why we're what, here? What the fuck does this have to do with Halloween? Halloween's happen in yards, Rich. People go to yards to trick or treat. Like, yeah, I know if people I go, go to front doors. doors. Is, that a, is that a millennial thing? Well, you have to walk through a yard to get to the front door. When do you There's do a that? sidewalk. There's no sidewalk here. What the is... sidewalk's over there. No, it's not. That's the studio. Oh. We're in the studio. Oh. You just have... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Is this set a metaphor? <laughs> Jay, look, you just have... <laughs> 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 Jay, you put grass clippings oh, on a no, tarp. No, is that, oh, there's a tarp oh, under here. Look, you just weird. put grass clippings oh, on a tarp. Look, this is not even, this is just a guy. Well, Rich, some people have been complaining that we don't really destroy movies too much anymore at the end of the show. So today, we're going to rectify that. That's right. Today, I've got a big ol' axe, and we're going to hack up Scary or Die 80s slasher style. All right, and here we go. All right, another movie has been destroyed, Rich. Got that, fucker. Scary or die? We voted die. Happy Halloween, motherfuckers. Nah, I think we're done here. Yeah, yeah, that was... That was terrible, though, Jay. We're, we're running out of ideas. Uh, oh, well. That's why we don't destroy the tapes anymore. Hey, do you mind cleaning this up? And while you're at it, can you get rid of all the uh, destroyed best of the worst tapes from over the years? I mean, they've been sitting here since we started the show. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, maybe. I might, I might sleep in. All right. 